you can tell our friends And they can have my things when we're dead But we gonna live forever Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. This is The Boys Cast with Ryan Long. In this episode, I got Sean Avery, the original wild man. If you guys don't remember, go watch a compilation of him right now. This guy was crazy. We talk a lot about the difference between, you know, being controversial then and controversial now and all the different sort of things. But before I want to do the interview, there's a couple, couple quick housekeeping things so you speak <laughs> not that any of us are doing the housekeeping ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho uh i'm officially retiring from talking about pegging because a lot of people were saying that i was obsessed with it but i will say that the la- the final thing was that someone had the funniest comment and that <laughs> was so in the in the pegging video underneath it someone said when a girl asked me if I want to get pegged, I always say the same thing that Al Bundy says. No peg. <laughs> Pretty solid. And, you know, a lot of people have been, we haven't talked that much about it, but everyone's been loving Danny on the podcast and people have been hitting me up. So he's coming back in a week and tomorrow, and I am going to be searching for studios in New York. We're probably going to add a producer. So if anyone has any recommendations, the boys guys with Ryan Long at gmail.com because I hate money. So we're going to set up a badass studio in New York exclusively for the boys. And I'm going out tomorrow and I'm going out cash in hand, ready to put the money down on a lease. So that's cool. A lot of cool things happening. And Danny's going to be coming on his co-host. We're going to be figuring all that stuff out. But for today, interview with the original wild man, Sean Avery. The boys cast with special guest Sean Avery, which by the way, I didn't realize so you you're from Pickering, right? I'm from uh, well, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't born there, but I I grew. Uh, we moved there uh, when I was fifteen, so my parents still live there. Yeah, mine too. And you played and you played for the Panthers. I didn't play for the Panthers. I played in Markham, but ah. um, yeah. But my dad coached the Panthers. I think a couple of years, the junior B team or or junior A team there. My dad told yeah. me that. He was like, you know, he's from Pickering because I yeah. did. Uh, yeah. Cause so I, I, I grew, I went to Pickering high school and okay. then uh, uh, my hockey career ended at uh, the Ajax Knights. Double right. A. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's I didn't know. I didn't know that you, uh, I didn't know you grew up there. You went to high school there the whole time. Yeah. I went to, so I went to Lincoln Alexander. Then I went to Pickering high school and you know, the, the Pickering arena right beside the skate park. That was my stomping grounds for skateboarding and getting kicked out of uh, the Pickering town center. Right. And, and then I moved to New York like a year and a half ago, but no, I grew, I was in Toronto my whole, you know, whatever right. life before that. Right. Oh yeah. wow. It's a small world. Yeah. I know. Not too many, not too many uh, people have made it out of there. <laughs> no, it is funny the people that are still there and you go back and you go, oh, you guys are still doing this just at yeah. the one or two bars that are kicking around and pickering in Ajax. <laughs> yep, yep. Did, so Wild. I saw you kind of talking about this because I don't know if you like the extent to which you follow Toronto stuff, but the Rob Ford. So I've been in Miami and people were, from Toronto, comedians and stuff were messaging me like, oh, we just locked down again. And yeah. you go, this is crazy. But you yeah. were talking about that Doug Ford. Yeah, it's fucking wild. I mean, um, you know, first of all, it's two different worlds. I mean, I'm in California now. California is open and California is the most democratic state. So you would think and then I came from New York. But the fact that Ontario just shut down again, it just it doesn't I, I can't comprehend it. You know what I mean? We're a year into this thing or a year and a half. Um, and like the whole vaccine thing, I mean, I, you know, first of all, I don't even know if the vaccines work and everybody's putting all their eggs into this vaccine thing. I mean, I had COVID. My wife had COVID. My three month old had COVID. It's unavoidable. I, I don't think that this thing is ever going to be something that you can avoid. I think it has to run its course. But the fact that they're on lockdown again and the fact that, you know, Toronto police are walking around handing people fucking tickets for not <laughs> wearing crazy. a mask outside. It's just, it's almost comical at this point that people are actually, would actually accept a ticket from a police officer for not wearing a mask outside. I mean, yeah, I would just be like, I, fuck I just, off. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like, that's, I would say, you can either arrest me 
and we'll take it to that that route or you can just fuck off and take that ticket and shove it up your ass and go <laughs> be ashamed of yourself at lunch that you're actually trying to do this you're actually trying and i don't know if it's a i mean whether or not they made it a law is still doesn't mean that like canada must have a constitution of some sort like i i don't think that legally canadians have to be forced to wear a mask outside i mean i i you're outside you're not in a bit in a business so who knows but it's it's crazy yeah, their it's constitution right now is white fragility, I believe. That's what. <laughs> right, right. Everyone's a racist, and uh, and uh, yeah. yeah. Sort of the wild. governors there had. There was a moment where basically Cuomo did the same thing here, and the same. Like, where all you had to do was tell people to. You make like cute videos. You go, listen, everybody, stay home. And he was like, Doug Ford was baking in his house and stuff like that. And everyone goes, oh, this guy's the man. And then. Right. And then essentially when anyone had to actually make policy to do everything, they're like, oh, this guy's an idiot. And all these governors, and uh, you know, that he's the governor of Ontario. They were kind of the man for a second. Everyone's realizing how how much of morons they actually are. Yeah, I, well, but but I, it's funny that uh, the people in Ontario and Canada, that they aren't fighting back as much as I think that they should be at this point. Why do you I mean, think at this, that is? Because I think that the science shows that, you know, you're not, people aren't dying from this anymore. Like, no, but why do you think that Canadians don't fight back more as much as Americans? Oh, like, what, I, the I, I, think, I think that's the, I think they're just too nice. I think that that's, you know, that age old rule of like Canada, Canadians ha have nice in them. They don't have that, that, that fight. Um, I think it's, I think it's true. And I think, you know, I I don't think that there's somebody that has, from an opposition standpoint, I don't think that anyone has stood up to round up the troops. I don't think that there's been that person in Ontario that the people that are like, fuck this, we don't want to lock down anymore. We don't agree with this. They haven't had their uh, Robin Hood stand up that they could sort of latch on to. Um, and I think that's the difference. You know, I think that's they why. They get killed. Yeah. And it's in Canada. There is a, the American culture is way more, you know, like if someone bumps into you, you yo, what are you doing? Whereas in America, uh, whereas in Canada, someone bumps in and you're OK. But it, I really do feel that even with myself, like you were part of all these controversies and yeah, it's like crazy career. Did you find with that that it would affect you or are you sort of just wired to like the fight? Yeah, I think I'm wired to like the fight, um, you know, especially when it comes down to like, I don't lie, steal or cheat. And like outside of that, everything's fair game. When I feel that people are trying to just bullshit you or or actually lie, steal or cheat from you um, or try to cut corners or they try and bend the rules. And then we're, we live in this world now where they have the ability to deflect off of you because if you want to stand your ground and stand firm on something, you, you know, I, yeah, I, I just, I've never been affected by, uh, I guess what people think. And I think that's the origin of it. Like you can't fight if you care about what people think, because people are always going to not like what you're doing. There's always going to be that side of it. Um, and I just don't give a fuck. Like I, I've never gave a fuck about what people think about me because I go to bed at night tired because I worked hard during the day. I didn't lie, I didn't steal, and I didn't cheat today. So, you know, or ever really. Um, so I'm good, I'm good with that. What do you think about the way that, because the controversy right now, if the ramifications of sort of poking your head out are so much higher, even when you were kind of, you know, in yeah. the thick of all that stuff. Do you feel like that's why a lot of the players even right now, you know, kind of just, there isn't as many use anymore. A little bit more in basketball, there's a few kind of, but there isn't as many people that are wild with their opinions because they all get, you know, shut down so much. Do you think that you could have been as wild as you were in, in today's climate? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, I think so because I think that the outsiders or the the people that, it's so divided right now that I think what's interesting is the the people that are more like-minded and think like me have also just said, fuck it. 
and they're saying, you know what, this is, we know what's right and what's wrong. And I'm not afraid to step outside of the box and I'm not afraid to get canceled because it's an interesting shift that's happening right now. Um, but no, if I was playing today, I mean, I'm hardwired a certain way, right? Like I, I think I thought about it the other day. Uh, people always ask like, uh, do you wish you still played? And actually up until last week, I've never had the feeling that I still, I never once felt I wish I still played until last week when this shit show started in Ontario again. And I thought I would love to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs right now because, you know, Brendan Shanahan would have a tough time. I would say something. I would say like, I live in Toronto. I'm living here. I'm watching what's going on. And this is not right. These people are crazy. You know, this yeah, is fucking crazy. Yeah, you have that crazy. place. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's the thing. It is one of those, I always kind of see this with, even if you look at the stuff that happened to you, like what well, your biggest controversy probably was when you said that everyone takes their sloppy seconds, probably right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Probably. And the On media. Paper, yeah. Yeah. And media will go, "Oh, this guy's the worst." But really, most dudes were probably like kind of funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's the gist of it. So even in that, like that, what you just said, this lockdown's crazy, all that stuff. Most people are like. Yeah, no shit. That's kind of reasonable opinion. But for you to go up and say, for anyone like popular to go to say that right now, they're like, this guy, what are you, crazy? So they... Yeah, I think that's the difference now between, uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, you didn't have, you didn't have the ramifications that you do now, which is people trying to cancel you. You know, we've, they've, yeah. they, these people have found a way to actually execute on their misery because that's all it is these people that do this to to try and cancel other people they're anonymous people they're people we don't know they're just miserable people they they've created they've found a way to have to self-satisfy themselves through this anonymous power that they can all jump on and and get after and it's funny that's why i started my podcast which was I really just started it as a defense mechanism for when they came for me. Cause I was like, okay, they're going to come for me at some point. And I want a long form platform um, so that I can defend myself. Cause Instagram and Twitter, you can't really, you know, I, I want to build this, this, this station that when they come for me, I'm going to be able, able to defend myself. And what I don't understand is when they do come for people, when people's number get called, if they're not guilty, why they don't fight back? And, you know, we've seen a bunch of different situations where I start to wonder, like, are they guilty? Why didn't they fight back? It seems like they aren't guilty of anything, but they didn't fight back. And I, I don't understand it. it they it, don't have it in them. I mean, I see that because yeah. I do, you know, in comedy and all the sketches I do and stuff like that. I have so much people where you can see the tiniest little thing and they're just like ah you know let me delete my instagram i'm sorry what do i have to do to make this it's kind of what do i have to do to make this stop and they yeah. go if you apologize you see they try that and try this i see yeah. people they get they get in trouble for something there was an accident and they go you know i'm so glad that everyone's mad at me you know it made me like they please right. give me my lashings so right. that's a big part of it what did you see? And they get the journalists to essentially be their, you know, puppets to do their bidding for them to, hey, we're going after this guy. And like, you know, all the journalists go, oh, OK, gotcha. We'll get in line. Did you yeah. find the when you were in the midst of all this stuff, did you find that the did you know the journalists were a bunch of liars or did you kind of think, oh, some of them are fair, some are, or you or were you were they the enemy for you? Um, I like think the press. that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think that. When I was in the thick of it, it wasn't as cutthroat as it is now. You know what I mean? There wasn't, um, you, you weren't, from a journalist standpoint, you weren't rewarded for being a scumbag and a trying snitch. to, yeah, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't like hardwired into the system yet. <laughs> now, now that's how you gain currency. That's how you um, jump to the front of the, pile that's how you get more followers that's how you get more engagement so but what i still don't understand is why you know players or athletes don't fight back you see some do 
you know, the Kevin Durant's of the world or the Draymond Greens. Like, there's some guys that do. Barkley doesn't give a shit. He'll just say it. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think also these guys are making money right now. They just, you know, that's like, why be bothered? You know what I mean? It's almost be better. To, it's better to just be less visible than visible. I mean, and one of the things with you is like you actually were a good player, whereas, you know, you were you pretty aware that if I'm not, you know, yeah, performing, I, I, I probably can't do this shit. <laughs> I think that it, for me, it was actually like a motivational tool for me to play. Uh, it's what kind of drove me to be able to play the way that I played every single night because, um, you know, people have to remember when I came in the league in 2002, there weren't many guys in the league that were my size that were, it was a big league that back then there weren't guys that were, you know, there were probably 20 guys in the NHL that were similar size of me. So how tall are you? I'm five, nine, you okay. know, and I, and, and at that point, I think when I, my first year, I was probably 175 pounds. At that point, it was a big league. Everybody was big, you know, 220 guys were all six foot. You didn't get, you didn't even get drafted back then if you weren't six feet. So I had to play that way kind of to survive. And I think that to be able to play that way, I had to, I needed something to kind of push me. And I think anytime that I would always get a little bit complacent, I, there was this thing in me that would, I would do something that would, caused me to have to back it up, right? I would have to, I would cross the line a little bit and that would get the juices flowing a little. And, <laughs> and that, that was, it was kind of like my, it was my, my honest meter. Like it kept myself honest and kept myself motivated. Yeah. I feel like one of the things I do with that sort of stuff is a lot of times it's, you just need to stop and then recharge sometimes, you know, so, cause when you're always kind of fighting and it always feels like you're in it, you get so cloudy and you just kind of, you start going through motions. Whereas even just like stepping away from a week, like put your phone down, then you're like, okay, I'm ready to fight a little bit. What, yeah. you know, what are we doing here? Yeah, no, I definitely pick my spots. Um, and I, I have the ability now, like, you know, the last day or two, this whole um, chemical castration argument for kids has been on my mind a little bit because i'm a new dad i have an eight month old son um yeah that's when you want to dip your toe into <laughs> it, it's you know so i i for the last two days i've kind of been holding off saying something like will i talk about it on the next episode you know i probably will but i won't talk about it today i'll let it sort of simmer collect some more facts you know, make sure that I'm my shit's tight before I start talking about it. When, yeah. In theory, I don't really need to. I mean, I'm a father. I know that right now, if my 12 year old son or 10 year old son told me that he was a girl, I would say, no fucking problem, pal. You can decide you're a girl when you're 18. But up until then, you're a boy. And like, that's, you know, that's my God given right as a parent. I don't have to appease all these fucking people that think that that's normal and that that's okay. I don't have to say, yeah, you know what? I would give my, my child uh, uh, drugs to essentially castrate themselves. Like, you know, we're in a fucking wild time right now in the world. It is, it is really, I, I, I haven't been around that long, but there's a lot of shit coming ahead right now. Yeah, it's one of the, I mean, anyone who's been, a, you know, in paying attention to public, you know, discourse for 20 years, there's no denying this is different than any other period that, you know, at least of the last modern history. And mm -hmm. in terms of the ability to, f f for, for the amount that stepping out with any opinion, you know, ruins your life. It's, I mean, perfect examples, like you're talking about that one. I mean... Remember, wasn't it 10 years ago you were kind of one of the people championing gay marriage and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I mean, that's why, That's why. like, I, I've done so many things that have essentially made me bulletproof in theory. Like, yeah, I was the first pr professional athlete that ever, that actually endorsed same-sex marriage on a national level or on a, on a state level. Um, 
So you're never going to be able to come at me and call me like fucking homophobic or watch them. Z- z- <laughs> yeah, you know, but but that's where it ends because yeah, I say to you, you're a fucking idiot. You don't even like you can't even gain traction on that argument because I'm rooted in it's rooted in fact that I'm not like I'm more pro gay than probably my know, boyfriend's gay. So <laughs> a lot. Right. Like early on. OK, before it was cool, before it was. like, <laughs> Yeah, so, before I was in vogue. Yeah, it, right. Um, so, yeah, like, I, you know, I, I think but I'm also smart enough to not you know, there's certain things that I don't understand enough about that I won't go near. So I'm not, you know, I'm not stupid when it comes to uh, certain things that I want to stand up for or talk out against. But yeah, that, that's a, that's a very good example of one where, you know, they can't really come for me on that because I was there. I was there doing it before anyone was fucking doing it. What percentage Um, of the, NHL is is gay that doesn't say it. You think? There's, I mean, there's got to be some guys. You know, there has to be. Yeah. There, there, there's there, mathematically, it's just not possible that that they were enjoying the hazing a little that, too much. <laughs> or just you know that haven't felt. There's got to be. I, I I must have played with some guys that were gay. I mean, it just I had to have. I would be surprised if I didn't. It kind of feels like. Even those issues, because I always kind of say that they, you know, the trans stuff and issues like that, they, it's never so much about the issue. You know, it's about here's the 12 things you think. And then you go, well, what about this one? They go, no, these are the 12 things, right? So, yeah. whereas most people, and I think that the certain people just have a natural like questioning sort of, wait, what? No, I'm not on any of these teams. What are you tell me the information and I'll decide issue by issue. And yeah, maybe I agree with this part of it and not this part of it. And they go, no, nah, we don't we don't do it like that anymore. Here's your 12 things that you think or you're kicked out of the club. Yeah, I mean, but also I think some things have to be I, I never had the thought of like, OK, some things need to be rooted in science. But I also didn't think that we would ever get to a point where we were talking about shit like this. And when you talk about that specifically, you know, the transgender stuff with kids, you have to kind of go to science and then logic and say, like, there's a reason why we don't let kids drive at 12, right? There's a reason why we don't let kids drink at 12. There's probably a fucking pretty good reason why we don't let kids decide that they want to or that they are another sex at 12, especially right now when it, you know, on the playgrounds and on their social medias, like that can give you clout and kids make decisions based on clout. And that's a scary thing. You know what I mean? Cause as a kid, you don't understand what's going to happen four or five years down the road when maybe clout's not that much of an issue or, you start to realize like, well, I, yeah, I don't really feel like this. I, you, you know, you, you know, the difference between what you felt like at 12 and 18 versus 18 and 30. Me at 30 versus me at 18 are two totally different people. Me at 40 today, totally different fucking person. Yeah, because a lot of these things, someone's essentially being, you know, I'm dealing with all this shit. I feel this weird way. And then they go, well, here's your answer. The only right. tr- the only catch is that you know, you got, if it doesn't work, we, yeah. you. you know, it's uh, a, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. yeah you're you're fu- totally fucked. You're, uh, this better work essentially, you know, right. It's kind of like with, I was saying this with, I was talking yesterday about this, but there's a lot of people in New York, it's everyone's depressed and it's almost like trendy. Right. right. And someone's like, well, Oh, it just makes no sense why they're like, it. I'm like, it kind of makes perfect sense. Cause you know, the way you were saying before there's currency, if everyone says, you know, this makes you more interesting, you actually get points for this. It's actually logical to do those things. I mean, there is. Yeah, I, I, I use it more even a, on a political level. Like I, I, you know, like I think people are Democrats because being a, a Democrat is cool on social media. Yeah. And where I they're think, born is what they're around telling. Yeah. Right. Ahead. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I think it's I think social media has changed the way that people find their truth. You know, it, it's 
it's this whole thing of like, yeah, it's trendy to be depressed. Like it's weird. Cause I don't have any friends that are like that. Like I don't have a friend that would ever get into that zone. Cause I'd be like, dude, you're a fucking, you're not cool. Like yeah, I have what no is interest yeah. in, in you, you bringing your energy into my circle. So let's just part ways. You know what I mean? I sometimes wish that I could because and, and you can't debate anyone now because you can't you don't even see anybody but um <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it's interesting that's why like with comics i feel like comics have such a huge opportunity because you know who are the comics going to be that say you know what i don't give a fuck about playing it politically politi politically correct because there's 75 million people that don't want to be politically correct and I can go on and have a fucking huge career with those people and be true to myself and actually be a comic versus be a pretend comic. And like the, when comedy gets affected, you know, we're fucked. I mean, that's you change the definition of the word at that point. Yeah. And they have the social media platforms kind of stepping in, try to, you know, help <laughs> essentially uh, referee on top of that. Uh, yeah. Say what's tell, tell people what, what's, funny what's allowed to be funny and what's not allowed to be funny that's but there, wild. there's also i mean if you look at it like i always comedy is not sports but it's the closest art form to sports in that when we're talking about you like it, you, there was an objective truth of how good you were and how much you score and uh back when penalty minutes was kind of a stat that was actually positive <laughs> that was yeah it was kind of funny, actually, back in the day. They go, oh, this guy had this many penalty minutes. Like, that was right, a right. positive stat, kind of, right? It shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. There, if in comedy, there is, if there was a league, which is Hollywood or whatever, and they kick everyone that is saying anything interesting or any anyone that's performing well out, all you do is turn, you know, you would turn the NHL into, you know, a junior hockey league, right? So... That's what they're doing, but at the same time, they I heard a good thing. Someone said they have they have legacy distribution, but a bad product. And I thought that was yeah. a good way to describe yeah. what's going yeah, on. Yeah, no, but I think it will catch up to them at a certain point. I think if we're still already. in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it will, and they'll quickly shift it because... Um, but also, you know, I think... You have to be you have to be able to be smart enough to get around it. Like, you know, you put a set together that lives in a hypothetical world. I mean, I don't know. There's a million different things that you can do to get around the angles, right? Yeah. To make sure that I can walk into a room and actually make Democrats and Republicans laugh and be offended and be disgusted and want to like do some soul searching when they get home, all of the above, right? It's just on how you deliver it and the, the balance of it. Or you could just say, fuck it and say, I'm only going to cater to one side of this. But, you know, there's not a lot of truth to that. And that's what scares me. Yeah. What did you think of, because uh, I think you were kind of critical of him before, but what did you think of Don Cherry when he got fired? Did you think what was bound to happen or were you thinking like this guy was on his way out anyway basically he kind of his his final comment was he was this controversial canadian figure maybe everyone knows him but he essentially what was the last comment he said something about immig he loves the poppies he said the immigrants need to put the poppy on right right you know listen that was <laughs> i mean did i you didn't like Don I, Cherry that much, right? <laughs> I, 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 I grew up watching Don Cherry, Rock'em Sock'em. I think when oh, I didn't yeah. like, when I didn't like Don Cherry, it was from, you know, it was part of the bit. It was like, okay, right. I'm going to make, I'm going to make Don Cherry like a, a, an enemy of mine and we'll play into it a little bit. But I, I love Don Cherry. I mean, he's as Canadian as fucking maple syrup. I think Don Cherry is a guy that, just aged out on this day of, in television. Like it was a matter of time before he said something like that. And, um, you know, I, I, the root of what he said, like, do I think Don Cherry's a racist? No, I, I think Don Cherry thinks that he's very linear. He's like, if you're, you're, you're an immigrant, why aren't you wearing the poppy? You live in Canada. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. Uh, 
it's just to me i see through that like i don't immediately stand up and go don cherry's a racist like no i i think don cherry just fucking wants everyone to love canada that's what i think yeah and i don't maybe that makes me racist Maybe I'm a racist because I think Don Cherry just wants everyone to love Canada. <laughs> Who fucking knows? You know, I don't know. Yeah, there was what was the other guy? Paul Pierce. He just got fired for doing the yeah. stripper party. <laughs> I mean, but that's like you know. And it, what's funny, I think I don't even know if ESPN went on the record and said if it hadn't have come from his phone, he wouldn't have got fired. Like if it was okay. somebody else filming. He would have been okay, but the fact that he posted it on on his own phone, I mean, I don't know why. Why would he do that? Like, I, he, I just, I just <laughs> I wonder. It's like, strange, right? Like, yeah, what, yeah, what's, your, what's the move here? Yeah, you didn't look cool. You looked drunk. You looked like sloppy and messy, and you know, strippers that aren't hot aren't cool <laughs> to you. That's the other thing, like. If he had a bunch of, maybe it would have been different if the setting was different. And he looked good, and he was like bouncing quarters off like some some asses, and like the girls <laughs> were into it, and everyone. I don't know, but yeah, that was messy. That was messy. I always thought because okay, I I got a question question because you know you dated a lot of like famous chicks and stuff like that, and do you what do you think the Right now, like, what what is the pros and cons of dating a famous chick? And do you re- recommend it, or do you think that's not the move? Um, man, I I think uh, I think that it depends what you're looking for, right? Like, I always said it's funny. Like, I I you get labeled like, oh, that guy dates a lot of celebrities. It's like. Yeah, I like dating independent, strong women who make their own money and like understand schedule is flexible. Yeah, and they they know what work is and like they they get it. Like that's why I was drawn to that type of woman. That's why I married that type of woman. Um, uh, you know, I think now I question whether or not some of these relationships are even real if they're rooted in like chasing clout more than actually um the relationship like it's fucking bizarre now but uh you know i think again i I, i'm not sure it's probably more difficult now because i'm sure you know the for the women it's probably even tougher you know they have all these other things that they have to deal with social media and like they can't say anything and i i don't know yeah it's it's got to be different. The, th- the whole thing changed, right? Like when the cell phone, when, when Instagram and Twitter turned oh, yeah. and it became a thing, it just changed the, it changed the game. I even remember time. in the MySpace days, you know, people being on tour and stuff like that. And then, you know, some chick like tracking people down on MySpace and sending messages and kind of just being, you know, this isn't going to be good for business. <laughs> right. <laughs> this whole thing. Right. Here. right. Yeah. There's a, yeah. uh, yeah. I, I would there is something about because I guess it depends what they're famous for that's probably the most important thing but as soon as you hear a girl that's like I'm bored and you go oh this is this <laughs> the the high maintenance level of you know if a girl's famous for just like taking pictures of herself and stuff like that <laughs> yeah I guess that's the other thing that's different now is like uh you can you know versus 10 years ago or 15 years ago you weren't famous just because you were famous yeah right so that that whole spectrum has shifted um it's not necessarily equated to being an artist anymore. It's totally different. So, yeah. But again, that, that also, I think, not that I like to use the word celebrity, but um, yeah, I don't even know what that word means anymore. You know, you definitely see a lot more athletes, like from a mainstream standpoint, um, it's much more prevalent than it was. It was, it was more rare back, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, again, I think it's somehow linked to exposure and like Instagram. Right. And, and, you know, um, uh, an actor, or an actress can say like, well, he's just as famous as me. Right. Cause he's got the same amount of followers or, uh, 
You can, look, you can look at it, yeah. Yeah, you can, <laughs> there's match. some sort of a balance there, where, whereas maybe, you know, years ago, it would have been a little bit snobbery, like, well, he's an athlete, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's all, it's all fucking, it's right, all based on Instagram. That depends yeah. on their age, probably, too. I think if you're, right, right. I think if you're a little younger, you'd be like, oh, sick, it's an athlete, or this guy's in this band, or whatever, and I think yeah. if, if the girl's like 20, you go... Eh, I think that uh, that's going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So retired think, athletes, you're saying top if they're. <laughs> I think they're. I think it's. Fuck! It's totally changed, man. Like, also, I think um, you know dating apps and all that shit, which wasn't around. I think that's changed the game too. But yeah, I, again, I think it's still. When I look at it, it's like you have way more opportunities. You know what I mean? Like if you're, if you are, uh, let's say you're an athlete or a musician and you want to try and milk the system or like get into the system. Oh, it's too easy now. Yeah, it's definitely easier than it was for sure. Which is bad too. Cause you know, probably you see a lot of people go down that path where they're just all in on that shit. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, I think they'll, they'll get, they'll get exposed eventually. I don't think that's only a matter of time. What do you think about, because this is predominantly an athlete thing, and I know you've had this pretty big career. You've done all this stuff after, you know, after sports, but a lot of these, a lot of these careers where it's kind of over and you're still fairly young, I feel like it, I've seen a lot of people where that gets dark. Do yeah. you, have you found that where it's, especially, I mean, you probably have cash. I'm like, I'm, but there's some people where, especially in like football, you'll see people, they're like 29 or something. They didn't really save that much money. They were this, you know, the most famous guy or whatever. Then it's kind of over. I feel like it, it can be like a dark place. Have you seen that with any yeah, people, I, you know? I, no, I mean, I, you see it all the time. I mean, I, I just see it today. This football player who's 32 killed five people yesterday. Really? I didn't see um, that. Yeah. He, he, uh, he killed two kids and like, he's a dad. It, listen, it's uh, it's something that it's definitely not easy, right? Like I was lucky enough that I made a decision that I wanted to do something different and that kind of drives me. Um, but you still have some days where it's like it gets a little, you know, there's tough days, you know, it's not, uh, it's, it's, and I have a lot of shit going on. So for yeah. for the guys that don't, it's not easy, man. It's not easy. You 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 get a lot handed to. It's the same as a soldier, you know. A lot of similarities, not not the same, but a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah I think so too. This, That's a good analogy. This full career, and then all of a sudden you're a certain age, and like That's all you do. You know, it's done, and you don't know what to do, and that gets dark. Yeah. I try not to think about it. I try and just keep it moving. You know, I think that's that's the secret. You got to just keep it moving. You can't yeah. you can't you can't stay stagnant for too long. It'll get too dangerous. Yeah, and a lot of times it takes, you know, four or five years to get really good at something. And so, what about in that meantime? You're kind of. What was your favorite thing that you did since? Like, because you know you ran the you were doing the modeling industry, a bunch of restaurants. You know what? You did a whole bunch of stuff. And then you've got yeah, I mean, the new I podcast think, was killing it. Yeah, I think like now, you know, I think I, if I would, if somebody was, if I met a stranger on the street and they asked me what I did, I'd say I'm an entertainer. I guess I'm an actor. I mean, I'm a, I'm a working actor. I just um, finished a David O. Russell movie. I just did a uh, a new series for a uh, guest start on a new. Um, amc series like oh yeah but you know it took me five years to get to the point where i could even uh, audition like that i even knew how to audition like i spent five years in new york in every acting class and and industry night and like that's all i did right but did you focus on it the way you focused on hockey where you go okay i'm taking this fucking seriously absolutely yeah absolutely um it was the only thing I did. It was the only thing that I, but I, you know, and that, that didn't make it easier. That, you know, made it probably 
survivable. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's, you know, when I, when I wake up now, I, I dream about being on set on a consistent basis. Um, that's kind of like where the future's going for sure. But yeah, if I hadn't had that, it would have been, it would have been dangerous. And I, I did a bunch of stuff before that just to kind of, I think, like I said, keep it moving. And then I found finally the thing that you I, yeah, that I knew that I wanted to sink into. Um, but I kept it moving. Right. And I, and I tried different things. Um, then, you know, you don't fail at anything. Like you can never fail trying to do something. You just can't. As long as you try and you fucking put everything you got into it, you can't fail. But I think now we live in a world where like, again, failure is al- almost celebrated. People like to celebrate other people's failures. They're playing the wrong game. I mean, even when the way that you described it with you go in my friend group, if someone came at us with that stuff, we go, I mean, yeah, that's bad. Fix that. Or I mean, you know, or go and don't fix it. Because yeah. if you're playing the game where it's, oh, who can be the most, you know, depressed and be the biggest wreck or whatever, it's kind of. There... Yeah, fuck. I, I, like I said, some days I feel like I wish I had some friends like that so I could just take take out some, some, <laughs> some of my it? anger on them. Oh. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's probably better that I don't. When you When you started doing the acting, now this is a very important question, but. Did you have to work to get rid of the Canadian accent? Because you got oh, sort yeah. of a thick one. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do what? Time. What's the accent you do when you're in the? I mean, like, I, there's there's words that hit. Like I say, uh, sorry. Now. Yeah, you go hard on that. Yeah. Instead of sorry, like, like it's I have to physically change the way that the word comes out of my mouth to say sorry. But you have also this- you have the full out Canadian. So I even saw some interviews of you when you were like 17 and this mm-hmm. is when you were because you were peak uh <laughs> like all oh, yeah you just go out there you give it a hundred <laughs> like yeah, you're yeah. right in the pocket that was before people started doing interviews differently every interview yeah. was kind of you know give it 110 but <laughs> you know we just got out there but yeah you have you're i have a little bit of that in me too but i think maybe i grew up in then i don't know i guess we grew up in the same area but for some reason i have a little less of that but i have the friends that it's the full, oh, getting proper tuned, just like, well, you have hockey talk. You talk like a hockey player. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that I don't. I, I generally think that I'm a little bit, you know. I, think I don't I say that ha- negatively. I like it. I think it's like, <laughs> I think it's fun. No, I, I, I feel like I've sort of found my pocket on, um, you know, I have an interesting kind of cadence and, and uh, there's definitely like a rhythm that I, that I'm very melodramatic. I don't really, you know, my highs and lows aren't there, which is something you have to be yeah. uh, cognizant about. And I have to, you know, that was the hardest thing that I needed to work on, right? Because maybe that's your stick, though. I mean, I don't know if you know, like the Nelk Boys in and all that stuff. They got full blown Canadian accents. Yeah, <laughs> I, I. The problem is, is that they sound ridiculous. You know, like <laughs> they, they really, they really do. They don't. <laughs> the, the, you know. Because at Dip some point they're gonna they're gonna be thirty and they're gonna be thirty five and they're gonna try and evolve that maybe maybe it'll work it'll keep working um, but yeah I I feel like you know I come from it from an art standpoint like I try and take it that if I like I auditioned yesterday for this uh, Pam and Tommy Hulu show that they're doing. Um, and you know the audition call. I was like, I was a, I was a, I was a dad, but I was sort of an ex actor. or I was an actor. You just feel the fucking person, right? Like I was a hot shot. I was like talking yeah. to a bunch of babes. Yeah, you could do a good hot shot. You just kind of morph into it, and you change your shirt, and like that's it. You're in it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So the costume yeah, does I, help as soon as you put the new outfit on. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But no, I think that's what's fun about it. That's kind of the challenging part. Um, that you know, I, I will I ever get to the point that I'm Christian Bale, where I can go from being like Cockney British to fucking Southern California American? Probably not. I, I 
I think that's something that a few are born with and have the ability to do. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I find it very remarkable that they can do it. Like, it's like being a singer. It's, it's very specific. Um, yeah, I get pretty jealous of those people because I'm yeah. actually seriously bad at accents. And there was a, a phase where I got really serious about trying to fix that you know, I'd be in the car and I would just do over and over, try to learn these accents. And I would see someone after like a month or two months and do it. And they'd be like, I think it got worse. So, right. <laughs> like I was that, <laughs> I was that terrible at the game that it's just, I just be like, okay, I'm not an accent guy. I'm just not wired that way. The same way I'm not going to be in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. That's what do you funny. think the, the biggest thing that, cause I, I feel like there's, you know, two or three things that I've done that I, uh, that I do them all the same. And, and what my question is, is what do you think that you kind of learned playing sports and stuff like that, that the rest of your life, you everything that else you get good at, you go, I do it the way that I did that. Fuck. I feel like everything, you know, I feel like, uh, I feel like the, the parallels between that are, you know, like, I, I don't like to waste time, right? I like to keep everything effective. Like, if I'm going to relax, then I'm really going to relax. I'm not going to kind of do it in between. Yeah. Um, I think that that's sort of the something that you definitely pull from the sports world because you're so schedule-driven, and, and, uh, and I think that's important. Like, I think that, you know, I still get up, at the same time every day and the first thing i do is go and do my workout and then i can my brain's clear and i can go on with the day very routine oriented like if i don't have a routine i'm dangerous like i'll probably end up in jail right so i think that's kind of that's sort of a blessing in disguise um that that i got that because it's just what works it's what feels comfortable do you think that's the biggest key that a lot of people mess up is they just try to do it all at once? It's like you need to be more regimented. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to kind of, uh, you just got to prioritize and, and, you know, keep it simple, but effective. And, and, you know, there's only so much you can do, right. You can only do so, so much, but, um, it's good for the mind too, I think. I get so driven nuts because I'm, I'm doing this movie with Danny and I, and I see this with every, my, my buddy and there's so many people that are like this where he'll be like, okay, let's meet up, but he only has three hours that day. So he'll kind of, you know, it takes an hour to get there, an hour to do this and then you kind of leave and, and, and you end up doing seven hours to do four hours of work and then he does that the next day and I was like, just split these two things up. Like, organ right. <laughs> put your things all in one day. It just drives me nuts. I'm like, the amount of everything you do you're wasting two extra hours because of the way you like block your life out and i right. find that there's so many people in my life i was just like give me your life for a week i will sh i will shed nine hours right yeah no that's uh yeah it's funny i just got a motorcycle and because i'm in california and part of the reason is so that i can just be more time efficient once the traffic comes back that's a huge move because i always yeah. think you go oh if i get a motorcycle that's how i die but the the efficiency standpoint, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I didn't get it to drive like fast and be cool. I just got it so that I don't have to fucking deal with the shit, you know? Right. So you moved to LA because of acting? Yeah. And, and to get out of New York. And to get out of New York. Was this pre-pandemic you moved or during? Uh, during, but it was planned pre-pandemic. -pan okay. So it, it was kind of in the cards and then... I think the pandemic even actually jump started it a little bit. So do you think that is New York dead or is in New York a, oh, yeah. a big comeback? No. You're, no. you're very uh, bearish on New York. 15 years it'll take. 10, 15. It, it, it won't be as quick as 9-11, I'll tell you that. No. And you think no, LA you think is good? Nine, well, LA is 85 degrees. I mean, I, it's like whatever. You know what right. I mean? How, how, how bad could it be? You know, you, you can be outside, you can, you can do it, you know, New York, you can't do that. You can't, you don't it's have your own space. That. 
there's no communal there it's 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 all communal space right and when the rules are like they are it's totally different i mean it's it's going to be i think there's going to be people that want it to come back but i think there's still going to be this weird very uncomfortable feeling that's going to keep people away yeah do you think the governor's here messed it up oh yeah well the mayor i mean all of yeah, them dude People are getting fucking stabbed on like street corners and uh, on the Upper West Side at two in the afternoon. Like, none of that. Yeah, the cops are nowhere to be found. That fucking city is lawless right now. <laughs> I'll t- I mean, so that, that's why I left. It too, is. I was. I would kill somebody. I would end up in jail. The road rage videos. Those are. <laughs> that's <laughs> so. I, yeah. I don't even know. Sean used to do these <laughs> videos where he would. Dri- you would ride through on your bike and anyone who's blocking the bike lane, you'd like, <laughs> you, you I'd the just l- light them up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was funny, but I have <laughs> outside my house. Cause they, all the people that sell stuff and this and that they, and I feel like a fucking Karen or whatever, I guess, but they play music on boom boxes. Oh, I would, I would, full blast. Their, I would, I would go outside and I would pick up their stereo and I would throw it as high as I could up in the air. <laughs> And then I would fu- I would fight three of them, bare knuckle fight them on the sidewalk. Yeah. And I would fuck two of them up really bad. And then I would be on social media and I would get arrested like two days later. That's why I left. Someone's got it's it's they go till three, four a.m. And you go. Yeah. yeah I mean, they haven't stopped partying. The, the guys that sell junk on the street. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've I beat up so many fucking Grubhub delivery guys <laughs> in the last three years. <laughs> How like, did you really, not get in trouble for that shit? Uh, it's just pick my spots, do it at <laughs> the, the right time. Or it was, they came at me. Yeah, yeah. It was always self-defense. But, um, yeah, they thought they were a little tougher than they were. Those videos were wild, dude. I saw a compilation of all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this guy's that's good- funny. There was, you know, uh, my dad said this. Tell me if you think this is true. He said you were sort of, because uh, he's friends with this guy Basil McRae, and he goes, you were sort of like a reverse of him. You had a little less penalty minutes, but more, uh, but more goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was a good player, though, Basil. I yeah. think. Yeah, he played a long time. It was a pain in the ass. <laughs> Um, uh, on your podcast, what's the most thing that's that's got you fired up and pissed off in the last? you know two three months they've been doing it look oh shit fuck every week it's something different um i mean i i think the consistent thing has been the masks outside that's probably been yeah from the from day one of the pandemic i never wore one uh for the first eight months like outside and people would yell at me and i would you know tell them that they were fucking insane and that they should go and reevaluate their life. And you are like, you get I, into I, it. Oh yeah. I would just destroy them, destroy them. I agree. Um, I would get real road rage when I was running. So I would run in New York. And yeah. when people came up to me and they go, I'm going to put the mask on. I got visible, like fuck you. You know, I got actual yeah. like road rage on the running trail from someone yeah. telling me, put a mask on while I'm running. I go, you stay home. That yeah. was one of the ones that does. Yeah. I get fired up on that too. Yeah, I mean, I ran the same route. Uh, or that was another one. Route, I'd have to say. <laughs> I, I I got it so bad, dude. I get killed on all my videos. Everyone's like, "This guy's so Canadian." I want. Well, that's a that's like a word choice. Like we say route, right? Americans say route. I mean, I can say route. Like, yeah, I had the same running. <laughs> yeah, route. you those you can switch by just changing it. You just change the word. But I say A like a ton, but I don't even do it. I kind of, you know, where I grew up was sort of almost urban, but it's even, it even seeped into that where people will go, oh, you're doing that, eh? Like it's not, it's not even so Canadian. It's just part of the vernacular, even if you right. don't, you know, have talk like that. Yeah, I, I would, I, I'll do a, I definitely don't think I said A on this while we did our interview, but I could be wrong. No, nah, you're not too bad. But no, the, yeah, the mask thing is the thing that still gets me. Um, you know, yeah. I just look at them and like I laugh, I laugh, I <laughs> no. laugh at them. This is a and they know and, and they know what I'm laughing at. I'm like now I point at them and go, ha ha. That's what nice you have to do. You got to flip it, right? Yeah, totally. They're fucking crazy. These people are crazy. They're yeah. totally fucking crazy. They're out of their minds. 
Yeah, that's fucking double masks walking around with two masks on. I mean, give me a break. Anyone that has anyone that wears two masks should just reevaluate like everything, you know, and they're outside. Like, it's just fucking wild. Yeah, take a but, step back and be like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Or just but, stay the fuck inside if you're that worried. I think that's the, you know, to go back to the polarization, all that stuff. On top, It's one thing if you were just, you know what? I'm some old lady. I'm kind of safe and, you know, I'm crazy. It's the opposite where they're, they're go, can you believe these guys aren't doing it? Is that, on top of that, they think you're crazy and you go, what do you, if you want to be a psychopath like that, fine, but you don't get to, like before the pandemic hit, you didn't see the, you know, the ladies walking around with the face shield, then looking at you like, look at this idiot. It's like, now you're the crazy one. Yeah. Well, especially because it's not rooted in any science. Like there's still no proven fact that you can, get i mean it's actually proven that it it i think you can't like i don't you get it from being inside in close contact with people the way that you fight covid is by being outside in the sun that's a fucking well, that's fact. for sure yeah with the vitamin d so, and everything like that it's like you were wearing two masks you look like a fucking crazy person and i just <laughs> laugh at them and i point at their masks and go fucking nuts and then i just keep <laughs> running <laughs> so I, it, it gets you know oh, yeah. it, John Avery just accosted me in the park. <laughs> it's a, well, that's what they were. Have you called. ever had that when when you were doing when doing one of those like road rage or anything where people go, <laughs> "Are you John Avery?" I think I, you you could always see a moment where they realized it was me, where they were trying to act tough, and then the guy was like, "Oh fuck, uh, I just realized who this was," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, bro, like, what do you want to do? Do you want to fucking?" put your work belt down and we'll fight in the middle of the street. Yeah. I'm cool with that. (laughs) And then he realizes it's me and he's, and he's like, you know, he tries to find a way out of it. Cause I'm like, I wish we could, I wish men could settle their problems that way. I wish we could just fight, but not now. Thank you for coming on the boys cast. This is, and the podcast is no gruffs given, which you changed it from no fucks given. Right. Yeah, you couldn't search it, so yeah, it I had good. to. Yeah, it didn't few, really work. I have a few friends that have fucks in the name of their like band or podcast, and you go, "You guys are screwed, yeah, screwed yourself for life." <laughs> yeah, it's just you can't search it. So I was like, "Okay, that we'll we'll make a quick shift here." Yeah. Oh yeah, check it yeah, out, man. Dude. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks for so much me. for for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. This has been the boys cast bit of a different episode, but it's kind of cool to hear what, you know, athletes and actors and people like that think of uh, all this shit too. And they reached out. I'm like, fuck yeah, that guy was wild. I thought uh, he's a very cool guy. So if you do want um, me and Danny are doing an episode on the Patreon this week, patreon.com slash the boys cast new studio coming soon. All right. Peace. <laughs>